Susanna, what are your feelings now? Well, very excited. Um, I was quite, I've been quite nervous through some of this whole building work just because it's such a big change to such an old building and you feel a real sense of kind of responsibility to it. Um, but the PCC at the church have been really fully behind the project and, 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 and now seeing it all kind of finished or, or nearly finished, it, it's, it's really exciting. There's going to be so much more space for us and for other people in the village, for the cafe, for the pub, when we can finally start doing those things again. So yeah, excited. I think at this point, for those who don't know, I better just ask you, uh, what it, what work has been done here? What 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 have you changed? Sure. So, what we've done, we've actually ended up doing rather more than we planned to at this stage. We had planned just to take out um, one pew, uh, several pews at the back, so along the whole width of the church at the back, and some behind the door. That had been our plan for kind of phase one of the work. Um, in fact, <coughs> during the course of that. Um, the builders discovered these two um, 17th century ledger stones in the floor um, which meant that in effect we had to take out the whole of the central block of pews which we'd been planning to do in the longer term but hadn't planned to do that right now so we've taken out a, a big central block of pews um, and we've taken out a couple of other pews at the back so creating a big open space in the middle of the church and then the font has been moved. The font was right in the center of the church on a, on a step that people frequently tripped over and it was really quite dangerous. We've actually moved it back to the, um, to the west of the door, which is where the font would always have been in a medieval church. So basically we've moved that back to where it, where it would have been originally. Ledger stones, of course, are, are memorial stones yes. placed on top of burials. Yes. What do we know about those burials? How, how exciting a discovery is it? <laughs> I, to be honest, I haven't, the archaeologist hasn't yet um, given us his report, so I'm not, not knowledgeable enough myself to, to be able to say a huge amount about them. But he did say um, that the stones themselves are massive um, and, he, and they're made of bath stone. Um, and he said that they're the biggest ledger stones made of Bath stone that he's, he can find any record of. Um, we couldn't move them at all, partly because they're enormous, but, but mostly because if we, had, if we had moved them, if we had found, they, they do cover actual graves. So there were obviously permissions and things you have to go through to, to move um, anything relating to an actual grave. And also we have no, we don't know what really is underneath. So if we had looked underneath, there might well have been a kind of void underneath and that would have, we would have been opening a can of worms. It could, building wise, it could have been very expensive. So we had to leave them in place. And it's rather nice because they're, they're slightly off centre. So like everything else in the building, they're sort of slightly, everything slightly wonky, everything slightly crooked, but that's kind of in keeping with the rest of the building. I, I, I don't suppose the names on the ledger stone are, are familiar names for Upper mm -hmm. Swainswick. One of them certainly is, the awful thing is I can't remember the name of the other one, but one of them is Danvers. Um, and the Danvers used to live in one of the houses up at the top in Hill House. And there's another memorial to a Danvers uh, on the wall just by the, just by the door. So that is a, a is a, a family that we kind of know about. Um, but it's one of the things we need to do is to is to once we've got the archaeologist report, then to do a bit of kind of research about them and, and that, see. That's a job for next yeah. year, maybe. Yeah. And of course, this church is famous for many things. Um, I've I've covered the pub. Yeah. But of course, this is the burial place of yes. the Woods yes. father and son. Yes. So again, part of our kind of longer term plan, um, the woods are buried in the um, sort of northeast chapel, so the end of the, the side aisle. Um, we have permission, they also had pews on top of them until a few years ago, and we had permission to remove those pews temporarily. And so they are currently in the crypt of St. Saviour's Church in Larkhall. Um, we're waiting on permissions to remove them, to have them permanently removed, which we hope we can do. They're actually beautiful pews, so it's quite a difficult, it's a difficult situation. Um, but it means that the wood ledger stones will be 
visible, which just seems so important in, in Bath. Well, you've got to think about your visitors too, who might drop the odd pound in, in your box. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that, I mean, obviously the odd pound is always, <laughs> is always useful. Um, but I think there's also just something about, we've got these parish churches dotted around the country. So many of them are such fantastic buildings and they, they need to be loved. They need to be visited and people to kind of be interested in them. And so I think it, it's, it's, the pound is good, but it's something more important than the pound. Talking about loving and cherishing, we should mention all the volunteers who are very busy as we yes. speak, as you were, <laughs> in getting the church ready for Christmas. Yes. A, bit, a bit of a, a race against time, but what sort of a Christmas are you going to be able to have here at St Mary's? Well, we're actually doing more or less what we what we normally do. So we've got a, we're having a midnight mass um, at 11.30, just to confuse everybody. Um, and then a morning service, so that's on Christmas Eve, 11.30 Christmas Eve, a morning service at um, half past 10 on Christmas morning. Um, like all churches, we're kind of, we're in this strange situation where <laughs> obviously we want people to come, but we're also aware there's not a lot of space in there. So so it's it's just tricky with COVID, like, like COVID's tricky for everybody. You know, we, we have to find ways of accommodating people with suitably distanced in the church. And can you sing? We can, you, the congregation can't sing. Um, a, the, it's allowed for a small group to sing so we have been because there's quite a few singers in our church we've been um for, we've formed a small group and we've sung the carols as a small group i, I yeah. hope there wasn't too much violence with people fighting amongst themselves as to no, who we got share selected. it out we share it out <laughs> and mary edwards very kindly uh, has got behind the organ yeah. uh, to play us uh, a christmas carol to end on and I know she's uh, been very busy this morning. Yes. And uh, we must make allowances because it's already pre-recorded that she hit the, the wrong note. <laughs> I, I said, that'll teach you for queuing outside of Waitrose for three hours this morning <laughs> before you came here. It's a joke. I'm grateful to her and to you. And thank you very much for saying I can continue to come and use your churchyard for my vlogs. Absolutely. So, Susanna, to you and everybody here, a Merry Christmas. Thank you very much, Richard. Thank you. Mm -hmm.